Hi, welcome back to AI for Mechanical Engineering. And today we're going to learn about um, dimension reduction. And before learning that, we're going to first talk about some basics of statistics for machine learning. So firstly, let's talk about the difference between statistics and probability. And when we're talking about statistics, statistics are from data. So from statistics are starting from data and then starting from data, we build models from statistics. And then for probability, probability is from our model. And from given model, this model produces data based on probability. So from data, we learn statistics and build model. And for a model, this is based on statistics. However, it produces data based on probability. So let's also talk about, learn about populations and samples. And these are from statistics. Firstly, a population includes all the elements from a set of data. So it's the entire data set. And from the population, we are able to calculate parameters. And a parameter is therefore a quantity computed from a population. These are quantities, something like mean or variance, and etc. There are many more parameters. If we calculate some statistics from the um, entire data set or entire population, we call this as parameter. However, now let's also talk about samples populations and samples. Sample is a subset of the population, so which is a one or more observations. So for example, if this domain is our population, this, a subset or a part of this population is a sample. And a statistics, what we're calling statistics is a quantity computed from a sample. So we have something like sample mean, sample variance, sample correlation. These are all calculated from samples. And what we want to do actually here is from these statistics, we want to estimate the parameter, which means from statistics, which is from samples, we want to estimate the parameter, which can be generalized for our entire data set or entire um, data. Let's talk about multivariate statistics. So let's say that we have data point like this one, xi. This is a single data point. And this is a vector with multiple dimensions. So dimension one, dimension two, and so on. And let's say that we stack all of these data points and formed one data matrix, X. So each of the row here is now data points. And this uh, matrix X is the set of data points, which we call sample. Let's say that we have M observations, which means we have M data samples or M data points. So that's the why, that's why we have, so this should be one, two to M here. We have M rows in our X matrix. Then when we're calculating our sample mean for X, we're calculating the mean from the data samples, from the M data samples, like this one, simply this one. And when we're calculating the sample variance S square, we're calculating it by using our samples, XI and our sample mean, and we are dividing this by M minus one. And the reason why we're dividing this with M minus one is because this is from a sample, not the entire data set. 
So that's the reason why we are dividing this by my m minus 1, not by my not by simply m. And this is known as the Bessel correction. So if we are calculating the variance of the population, we're going to divide this by the entire number of the population inside our data. Let's also learn about some correlation, how to calculate correlations of two random variables, and especially we're going to assume scholar value variables here. So scholar variables xi and yi. And as we learned right before, we can calculate the sample variance, for example, for variable x as sx using this equation here. The sample covariance, which calculates the covariance of x and y. And here we can calculate this by now summing the multiplication of the derivation of x and y variables each. And then we, we divide this by also m minus 1. So by using the sample, covari sample variance and sample covariance, we are able to form a sample covariance matrix, which matrix is here 2 by 2 because we have two random variables, x and y. So we have sx, sy, sxy, and syx inside our sample covariance matrix. And one thing you need to note here is that this is symmetric because SXI and SYX will be the same because you can see that even though if we change the order of X and Y here, this will be the same. So we have a symmetric matrix for our sample covariance matrix. And when we're calculating the correlation coefficient in our sample, what means that we are trying to quantify the strength of linear relationship between our two variables, X and Y. So this is written here. So we're calculating the strength of this linear relationship of x and y, and this can be calculated by this one, r. r equals to the sample covariance divided by square root of, of the variance of x and the variance of y. So you can think this as some normalization. Normalized s, x, y. So let's also take a look into the meaning of correlation of our two variables. Let's say that we have two variables, x and y, and let's say that um, these variables, x and y, are sorted. So x1 is the smallest and xn is the largest, and y1 is the smallest and yn is the largest. So for example, then, if we um, pair our data as x1 comma y1, x2 comma y2, and xn comma yn, you're going to be able to expect that these data points will um, have some correlation because if we have higher x, you can also expect higher y because xn and yn is the largest. So it's going to have some dependency like this one. So we have a positive correlation between x and y here, and we call this as statistically dependent. Also, similarly, let's say that we um, paired our data in this order, x1 comma yn, x2 comma yn minus 1, xn comma y1. So x will increase in this order. However, y will increase in this order. So what we can expect here is we're going to have, if we have higher x, now we're going to have higher x, we're now going to have lower y. And we call this as some negative correlation. However, even though this is negative, it is correlated because we are able to expect our y, the, the, the um, tendency of y based on the information of x. However, it, the magnitude will go lower when we have higher x this time. So this negative correlation, this is also something that we call that is statistically dependent. However, now 
if we just do it some with some random selection, so um, there's no kind of actual um, pattern or correlation between x and y, we're going to we're going to obtain some plot like this one. The x comma y plots will can um, exist in any any points in this circle. So here, actually, there is zero correlation, and we and we call this as statistically independent variables. So based on the variables, we are able to calculate the correlation coefficient. And if it's plus one, it is close to a straight line, but with a positive slope. And if it's minus one, it is close to a straight line, but with a negative slope. Here, this is a link that you can actually see how um, your line changes depending on the value of your correlation coefficient. So now let's take a look into this link here. So if you're in the link, you're going to see a website like this one. And let's, you are in this link, you can actually change the correlation and then see how the line changes. So for example, if you change to a negative correlation, you're going to see a straight line like this one with a negative slope. And here, if you have correlation zero, year to zero, then you're going to see some uncorrelated data. And if you increase this to one, it's getting more correlated and correlated, and then finally it becomes a perfect straight line with a positive slope. So this is one good um, demonstration of seeing how the slope or how your data points lies on some kind of a line when your correlation coefficient changes. Okay, so we saw the demonstration from this link here, how our correlation coefficient changes um, depending on how our data points are um, close to some linear line. So we can know that correlation coefficient indicates how our data points are close to a linear line. However, also what you need to note that there is no information on the slope. The thing that we need to know that we know is if correlation coefficient, if the absolute value of this correlation coefficient is close to one, it is linearly correlated. However, if it's close to zero, it means it's uncorrelated. And one more also important thing is that these correlation coefficient does not tell anything about causality. When we're talking about causality, we, we are talking about something this. What causes the changes of y? Is it x or is y causing the change of x? This is causality. And we actually, in the correlation coefficient, there's no information on about causality here. No information about cause and effect. So let's also um, take a look into correlation coefficient plots. How can we plot these correlation coefficients when we have our data? And I'm going to explain this through this PowerPoint slides. So what we can do is we can use if we use this library from Seaborn, so import Seaborn as SNS, and you can also import Pandas as PD. And then what you can do is if you import your own data, which let's say that it has four different variables here. Let's say that this is, for example, X, Y, Z, and W here. Um, then if you, pay, if you plot your data using our Seaborn library, seaborn.pair plot of our data frame, then you're going to obtain some plot like this one, where this y and x-axis indicates the variables. And here, what you can know is, you can know, for example, the correlations very easily. For example, here, if you look here, we can see a positive line here. It means that our variable z and y are positively correlated. Also, similarly, we can see some negative line here, for example, here, let's say here. Then what we know here is Y and W is negatively correlated to each other. We can also see some uncorrelated data sets like X and Y, X and Z, X and W. So basically, X and the other variables are uncorrelated. So there are many important informations that we can extract if we draw this pair plot from Seaborn library. 
Now let's also talk about covariance matrix. So when we're calculating covariance matrix, we are trying to calculate the probabilities because this is from the entire population. And this covariance matrix, this is um, the covariance matrix when we have n number of variables, x1 to xn, and this is from the population. And actually, what we're trying to do is, we're trying to do some approximation of these covariance ma matrix using our sample covariance matrix. which is statistics, because we are calculating this from samples. So for example, if we only, let's say that we only have two variables, x and y, then the thing, the sample covariance matrix that we um, learned before, this is the approximation of the covariance matrix from the entire populations. So um, we're going to use these covariance matrix when we're learning about dimension reduction in the next um, lecture.